Okay, so let's start right in. Um, so the first demo we're gonna do, very straightforward, is just simulating a sine wave and its impact. So hopefully you all have Simulink open. For now, just like, um, to understand the function of all these different blocks I have here slowly. So, <clears throat> but the idea of this model is again to display a sine wave and we're gonna integrate it. There's this integrator block and the scope is basically like an oscilloscope, so it's used for clock. So, so start a new model file, that's just control N. There are four blocks, so take a sine wave, it's in the sources library. In fact, I can start making it with you too. So control N, that's the model, okay? So you go to the sources library, which you see is here. You there, okay? Drag a sine wave onto the model. Then also drag an integrator, which is also in the continuous library. Drag an integrator out. A mux, a mux is just a multiplexer. You could also buy the search thing, so you could just search a mux. Integrator, it's in the continuous library. Second, yep, and then there's scope. Scope is for output display. Sine wave is in the uh, sources. So sources and sinks. Sinks is display stuff, output stuff. Sources is input stuff. Does that make sense generally? Okay, so you should have these four blocks. Scope is in the sinks library, you can look it up, or you can also look it in, um, or it could also be in the con um, commonly used blocks, it should also be there. That's called the MUX, the multiplexer and that'll be in the signal routing library. You could also search for it, there's a search bar. So once everybody has that set up, it is great. Multiplexer, and so the idea with the multiplexer is that I want to plot both of them on the same scope. So that's why the multiplexer is there. See what I'm saying? Because the scope only has one input. So you can see that with each block now there are arrows on left and right, one is for input, the left, and the other one the, on the right is for output. And the so scope can only take one input. So if I want to plot them both on the same scope, right, then I need to multiplex them. It's just like if you, um, it's just, yeah. The idea is, I mean, it's most intuitive if you're an electrical engineer, hello Maddie. Um, okay, so everybody have that so far? Okay, so just quickly then, so we have these blocks. Before I start wiring this th together, I just wanna show that you can, so, so for example, you can click, double click on the sine wave and you get this sort of configuration box where you can modify the amplitude, the frequency, et cetera, of the sine wave, right? And similarly for integrator, you know, the initial condition is of course important, so you can see the initial condition and we'll be coming back to this. Right, so basically when you double click anything, you can modify properties that are of interest to you related to the block, right, which, okay. So now let's start buying these things together. Um, so, so for wiring, I usually prefer going from back to front or from the sink to, uh, from the block that is connected to the block that is connected from, if that makes sense. So backwards wiring basically because it makes it easier. So if the integrator, so I take the thing, wire from the integrator and go to the sine wave, right, like that. You could do the opposite too, but usually the reverse wiring is easier. And so from the integrator, one goes to the mux. Then from the mux, you have stuff going to the scope. And so then finally, you have this point where, you know, you need to basically attach this first input into the mux somehow into the sine wave wire, right? Because sine wave doesn't have any other output. So what happens is you can drag stuff back and you see that big black dot that comes up that shows that, is everybody with me? Big black dot shows that you're now connected to the output of the sine wave. The other way to do this, by the way, this is a, if I leave this, this is a broken wire, this is a red dotted wire, you can click it and hit delete and that gets rid of it. 
could also right click on this wire, not left click, right click, and then drag it, and then again you have the big black dot. So that's two ways of connecting, to, like causing a split in a wire. You could use right click on the wire and drag it to where you want to drag it to, or you could drag it in the reverse direction. And then okay, so our circuit at this point is pretty much complete, okay? Um, so we have everything, red dotted wires, we talk about that, talked about that, and so now we're gonna run this, okay? So the run is just the green button here. Another important thing is this text box here, which is basically simulation time. And the problem set, I'll tell you what simulation time to use until you actually run it. So for now, you don't need to save this also, that's the good thing to like run it, you can just run it. It does do that beep, which is usually error, but in this case it means it ran. Um, so then, and then you look at the scope, Good thing, can everybody see this sort of? Just double click on the scope to see the output. Yeah, it's a diff yeah, it's a step size warning, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, and so you could right click on this thing and auto scale or you could press this here to auto scale, and so it just makes the axes a little bit more convenient for you to look at. Now, you can probably see this better on your computers, but usually the first, the first signal that goes into the scope is yellow, and the second one is purple. That's the color coding. Look at it on your own scope. I think it'll be easier. So the first one is a sine wave, which is the yellow, which makes sense because that's the first input going into the scope. The second one, the second one is purple, and that should be the negative of the cosine. So we would expect that that should start at minus one, but it's starting at zero. And so it looks like it's sort of shifted. And so the reason for that is because of the integrator. You remember the initial condition in the integrator was set as zero. So if we make this minus one, which is just a pure negative cosine then, right? And then we run this thing again. Look how the scope is now automatically such, such that you do get a negative of a cosine. So that's why, so for example, that's important. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So that's pretty much, I think, the first demo. So this is showing you sort of just generally the idea is scope, how to output stuff, input stuff. Okay. Yeah, so initial values, you can just double click on integrator. The initial condition box. So let's go to the next demo, which is a first order differential equation, okay? And so this is the differential equation we'll be working with, dy over dt plus 5y is equal to 10, and the initial condition is 5. So you know how to do this easily in ODE 45. Let's try doing it in Simulink, just as a matter of information. So if you want to use the integrator block, right, so that, so, and I'll talk about in a bit about, there is also a derivative block in Simulink, but we usually prefer integrator blocks, and I'll talk about why. And so you need to restate this differential equation in integral form, which is just this, right? And so before we go ahead and make the model, this is sort of the, I want to go through the idea of the model. So here's my integrator, right? So start by looking just at the integrator. The integrator, the output of that should be y, right? Okay, so I take y and I multiply by minus five, which is this gain block which we'll be using. It's just multiplying it by minus five. So I have minus y and then I add 10 to it. So then I have 10 minus five y and then I send it into the integrator. Okay, so I get my derivative. And then, so this is a little bit complicated, right? Or does this make, I mean hopefully it'll makes, it makes sense but it's a little bit sort of, you have to go around, you have to wrap your head around it to make sure you understand what's going on here. Yeah. Because this is y. What's going back is just y, right? So I just want to output y, right? That's all happening. So I'm going to repeat it once and then let's take questions about this because this is very important to understand. So start by looking just at the integrator block. The output of the integrator in this case should be y, right? And my differential equation, dy over dt, is just 10 minus 5y. So the input to the integrator should be dy over dt and the output should be y, right? I understand that much, right? So if the output's y, I have to multiply, it's 10 minus 5y, so I get minus 5y here, and then I do 10. 
So the minus 5y is coming, I multiply by a gain of 5, and then I modify the add block as I'll show to have a minus here, so it's minus 5 times y, and then I add a constant 10, so it's 10 minus 5y, which is getting inputted into the integrator, and then, so that's dy over dt getting integrated, and then you have y, and then I put a slope here. Does that make sense? Questions? The logic fairly clear at this point? So your question is, if it is, so what is y squared? So it was 5y squared, is that, is that what you're concerned about? So, so you could, um, there's also a multiply bo block, okay? So that's a very good question, I've never done it myself, but I can tell you how to do it. Um, so apart from the gain, there's also, let me just show you. So you see a product block? So what you'll do in that case is split that y wire and take the two inputs of the product as the two y's and then you can have, does that make sense? No, so your question is what if the differential equation was 10 minus 5 y squared, right? So what you'll do, start a new M file for this. Does everybody understand that question? Okay, so what you'll do in that case, in fact, why don't we simulate both, just we have time. We'll simulate both of them. So let's do 10 minus 5 y and then we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's build the first 10 minus 5 y model, okay? And so, okay, so the gain and the add blocks are in the math operations library and the constant block is in the sources library. Yeah, so, the, so I note that here too. So the add block by default is pluses. If you double click on it, you can change the list of signs. So that's what I did here. You could also use, in this case, a gain of minus five with the add block just by default, right? So I'm gonna just make this with you guys. Stuff. And the initial value, don't forget to change it, was five in this case, so just to make sure. Okay, so we're gonna run this. Get the scope. Right? We start off with a value of five for y, and then you go 10 minus five y is equal to zero, gives you y is equal to two, which is my music steady state, right? Okay, so does that make sense so far? I sort of sped through that, I'll wait. How many people are getting this output? Okay. Get this output. Meanwhile, I'm going to work on the. No, no, it's a little bit. I'm not going to go too much into detail. I don't know myself. Too. Yeah. So I'm not going to go too much into detail about this, but. You can imagine that, um, so, so the integrator block has a step size thing built into it, and that's what it's showing you, basically. Very complicated algorithm to determine the step size. You can tinker with it if you don't want to. So the steady state would be, but okay, so what are our ways of diagnosing that what the output will be will be good? So the steady state should be 1.4, right? 10 minus 5y squared is equal to zero, so it'll be the square root of two. It will be the steady state, so that we'll see. The initial values keeping the same. So let's see, so let's do that right now. I just wanna make sure everybody's got this. I 
I mean, but I use the I didn't use the plus minus on the ad block, so. Yeah, it should be an exponential decaying to zero. But is your exponential going from zero to two? That's because the initial condition I changed it to five. So if you change the initial condition to five. Okay, I'm gonna, we can come back to this. I'm gonna meanwhile work on the y squared example. Ask me what's going on, what happened? Gordon, what happened? Okay. How are you doing? So that's just whenever you, just like when you, to OD45, you have to pass an initial condition, right? Similarly to Simulink, you'll also have to pass an initial condition that you get to by double clicking on the integrator block, and then you can change it. Five. Yeah. Yeah, then, then you get a DK. You get a DK? Yeah, good. So now this is going to the example that was brought up. And this is an important point here that Simulink can be used so when you can't use OD45 and your differential equations are really complicated, have tons of nonlinearities, stuff like that, Simulink can still be used. And in fact, in the way the PV loop model is set up, there's some nonlinearity in that. Okay, but going back to 10 minus 5 y squared as being dy dt, this is basically the setup. It's essentially the same except the output of the integrator goes into this product block where I have the same signal going twice into the product box. So it's like taking a square, right? I'm sure there's some power block. You can take a look. I don't, I'm not familiar with it, but I'm sure there's some power block in this thing too, which may give you powers of more than two so that you don't have to take a product, but this is a clean case. You have 10 minus five y squared. Does everybody see how that'll go, that's gonna fall out of here? One way for me to check whether it's doing the right thing is for me to look at. So in this case, the initial condition is still zero and see it's going to somewhere around 1.4, so that makes sense, right? Output, I should change the initial condition. Okay, does that answer your question then? Yeah, in this case, right, because I just see how this big black dot is here. I just took both the inputs to product are the same thing. Yeah, you could, there's probably a power block in there too. So the next thing I want to talk about very briefly, we've talked about auto scaling the scope output. If you want to manipulate the simulation results in MATLAB, say you want to plot things in the way you want, you're very familiar with MATLAB functions and you want to use them, you could always use this, what's called the um, two workspace block. It. So this block here, okay? So I put this block, this is again my 10 minus 5 y example, and I go and say I want to output y into the workspace. I can just go connect it to y here, which is what I did, okay? And so now sim out would be my output into the Mat MATLAB workspace. So I run this simulation, and now, no, 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 uh, two workspace is the name of the so, why doesn't everybody actually put that in their simulation? Just search for it in the library, I think. I don't exactly remember which library it is in. 
workspace it's called. For the 10 minus 5y model, it's 5. So this block, it looks like this. It'll say sim out by default. Has everybody found the block? Just I just searched for it. I don't remember which library it is under. It's called two workspace. So I'm just quick, going to quickly show if you do sim out here, right, then sim out is actually this sort of structure. And I don't know if you've dealt with these structures, time series structures before. Okay, why do, has everybody gotten to workspace? But good. Okay. So when, then when you run the simulation, you'll have this variable called simout, which is generated. And the way to, it's just, if you've taken, um, it's just like a class or a struct or whatever. And so simout.time should give you the time points that were used. Okay, simout.time. And that's again, if you look at simout, it's got these various attributes, time, data. And the way to always get attributes out of these things is use the dot. So simout simout dot time will give you all the time points. If I do simout dot data, that should give me all the data points. So if I could plot these in MATLAB, for example, on my own, simout dot time, comma simout dot data, and right. And so then I get the same thing. Okay. I just again connected it to the output of the integrator. No, no, no. Once you, uh, did you run the thing? So use the auto scale feature. So right click, right click. No, just on the plot, right click. Wait, one minute. Oh, you're doing 10 plus. You see that? You did the minus 5 gain and you did oh. the minus. So you did 5 gain. You do either or. Wait. It's working, right? I have that. Okay. So sim out, is that what you're asking about? So sim out has, so you can just type in sim out here. So you see how sim out, this was basically spit out by my simulation now because of the two workspace block. And if you just type in sim out, you have time and you have data. So you could do sim out dot time to get the time set and you could do sim out dot data to get the data set. Let's, let, let me finish stuff and then we'll come back to it if it's not working. Okay. Uh, there should be a stop button. No, there should be a stop button here. I'll show you where the stop button is. Run and there's a pause and a stop which com should come up when you're running. Okay, let's, let's look at it after class then. I just have to out for now. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about here is that a lot of the blocks that we're looking at, they have a lot of inputs, right, which we get at by double clicking on the blocks. Those inputs don't necessarily need to be just scalars, they could be vectors as well. Okay, so for example, if, my, if I wanted to integrate for two different initial values, say I did five, but I also wanted to do for zero, so I could, I could go back to my integrator block here And I could specify my initial condition. So it's very important to include square brackets here, like that. So it's a vector now. So which means that I should get two plots out. 
right? One corresponding to each initial condition. Okay? So let's just do that. Okay. And then I run this. So if you look at the scope now, there are two plots. One, for the first initial condition, I, I mentioned that yellow is the first plotted T. So that's for the zero initial condition, makes sense. And the purple is for the five initial condition. Does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody getting that? And I can double verify that sort of by looking at sim out now. So earlier sim out here was a 52 by one double in data, and now I have two, col two columns here, 58 by two, corresponding to each initial condition. Okay. Okay, and so you have this way of sort of getting stuff for every element in a vector. You also, you know that you could use for loops to traverse the vector, and there's actually a for each subsystem block. It's basically a for loop in Simulink as well, which you could also use for the same thing. So pretty much everything you can do in MATLAB, you can do in Simulink, and everything you can do in Simulink. It's just literally a graphical interface to do those things. Okay? So there's one question in the problem set where you could either use vectors to do some, you get the Frank Starling curve. I don't know if you've heard about that curve so far in lecture yet, so perhaps you haven't. But from the model, you'll be generating a Frank Starling curve and you could use for loop to do that or you could use vector notation. The other thing is you can comment blocks in and out just like you comment code in MATLAB. And the way to do that, for example, is you could just go here and so say my sim out block, I want to comment it out. I don't want any output to go in. And so to see that first, I'm going to clear everything here. So also, there's no clear all every time you run the simulation. So all the variables you've defined thus far will be remain. So if you're running the simulation over and over again and you're using the same variable sim out to represent the output, it's going to keep getting overwritten. Okay? So anyway, so I cleared everything. And now, so I right click on the sim out and do comment out. And so now I would expect that when I run the simulation, no sim out is generated. Okay? You can comment stuff out. And, and also then finally, I want to, before I finish up with this demo, I want to talk about using the derivative block. There is one. Um, however, MATLAB, MathWorks itself recommends using the integrator block because the derivative block could be very sensitive as far as its step sizes are concerned to the input signal and so to the dynamics of the model itself. The other problem, I was trying to make this, make this differential equation system work with the derivative block yesterday. Uh, the other problem is that the first output of the derivative block is zero, okay? Which means that your initial value, right? Because if the derivative is zero, that means that the initial value must be the steady state value, which in this case is two. And so the only way I could at least get it to work was I take my y signal, which is two to begin with, and then I put in an impulse of three, and then feed that into the derivative blocks. Impulse being a very short pulse of three, and then I could somehow get the simulation to work. I don't, maybe there's a more convenient way of getting it to work, maybe you guys could tell me. Um, but, so that's why also the derivative block is not that convenient, because it's not that easy to specify an initial condition, okay? So just use the integrator blocks for the most part to simulate the same thing, okay? Okay. Uh, this is the third demo I expect uh, you guys to do in class right now. We have about 10, 15 minutes. Um, so, because the problem set basically, in the problem set, the entire left ventricle is basically thought of as a bunch of RC circuits put together. And so I thought I'll end with this demo, even though this is a lot simpler than what's there in the problem set, the idea is that at least you'll start thinking about differential equations as RC circuits or RC circuits as differential equations, make that leap, and so then may, hopefully the transition into the problem set would be a little easier. Very simple RC circuit. Um, there's current flowing in the circuit. You've probably all seen this in ENM or something. And so there's just a voltage source, a resistor of one ohm, a capacitor, one farad, and there's some current flowing through the circuit, and VC is the voltage at this node, okay? I want to know through Simulink, what are the plots for current and VC as a function of time, and the initial value for VC is zero. And I've also given you the equations describing the circuit, right? V minus VC is equal to IR, right? Just Ohm's law here. And then this is just the equation of a capacitor. You, C is equal to Q over V, where Q is a charge. I just differentiated that, so you get I C dVC over VC. Right? The derivative of Q is I, and the derivative of VC is just dVC.
So use these two equations. Do, do these two equations make sense? Everybody, right? Everybody seen this before? So use these two equations and use the scope to plot the current flowing in the circuit and Vt as a function of time. Yes, it takes five to 10 minutes to do that and then I can go over What was not working in this case? This came out or no? Go back to your, so see how SIMOUT is just working? That's what I was doing. So you just work with it. First dimension is, the first column is probably That values. Because that's the first, and then signals as. Yeah, probably. But with column two. Oh, zero, five. Oh, you have two. Oh, sorry. You'll have to use T out for plot. The two columns here represent the two. The two columns represent the two different currents. Are you running it off corn? So, no, the second column, as I was saying, is. Go to integrator. We're only seeing one, is that your question? Right click it on. Okay, yeah, so, so on some versions of. Um, um, I think the one on corn, you're, who's the, you're running it off of corn? Okay, so, okay, some versions of MATLAB, slightly older versions, you'll have for scope, you'll have to right click on it and auto scale to see the plot. There's no auto scale option on the menu. And also, same out may have a different structure to access the data out of it. If you are having the same problem, come talk to me. No, that's, so oh, don't, I, yeah, I don't want you to ma model it as an electrical circuit. I want you to model it just exactly as how, what we were doing in class, using add, gain, uh, subtract, yeah. Yeah, so don't, don't, I just want you to use simple what we've talked about so far to do it, yeah. Last year did that till like the Sunday before the pump set was due. Yeah, so go to simout now. So, yeah, simout. Simout.signals. The signals. That's got, you were using two initial conditions, right? So each mm -hmm. column corresponds to initial the data for each column. But it with T out is your time variable. Does that make sense? Oh, so you could, so, so simout.signals.values, and the first column of that is your first data set, so try and put, and T out is time. Does that make sense? Try plotting that. If it doesn't work, I'll come help you. Values, and that's a 58 by two matrix. So the first column corresponds to the first initial condition, the second column to the second initial condition. T out is the time, corresponding time variable, okay? Wait, Shamik, you had a question? Did your stuff work with the SIM out? 
Now go, go to Samaritan. I think you might be having the same problem as the other people. Here, right here, sinks. Okay, if you do, I'll come back to you then. Yeah, Jordan, you had a question? Okay, yeah, we'll talk about this. But try, I mean, try putting in whatever you can. I mean, the heart of it has to be an integration operation somewhere, DVC over DT. So start by putting in the integrator block and saying, okay, it's going to output VC to me. Where is that VC going to go? It's going to go into the first equation somewhere, and then you get current out, and then it should all join together. Smart dot signals dot values, I think. Yeah. Okay. So it's important to understand this example because the PV loop is just three RC circuits stacked together. It's important to understand how this basic wiring is working. And Uh, just so your voltage VC should look as if it's going to one over time, and current should be starting at one and decaying to zero. And at T is equal to one second, if you really want to know, voltage value should be about point six. Let's talk about what this model should be. So again, start with the integrator block always, right? So the integrator block in this case is going to output VC to me. It goes into this addition block with one min which is doing the V minus VC calculation. Okay? Does that make sense? Everybody with me so far? Just the integrator and the addition block? Those two, look at those two. Does those, do those blocks make sense? Okay, and so you do that, and you then do one over R, so you get current at this point, right? V minus VC divided by R, you get current. And then you do, so you have current I, and then I over C is just the derivative. So then I do divide the thing by C, right? And then I should have something that I can feed into the integrator, right? That's all. Does that make sense to everybody? So then I use the mux. So V minus VC over R, that's current. So I take that out, put it, put it on the scope, and then I put out VC on the scope. Everybody follow that? Again, start with the integrator block, and then trace your way around. Don't try. There's no, with, with feedback in general, right, there's no idea of, like, there being a top-down approach. You have to just start somewhere, and then you'll, you know, we start with the output of the integrator here and come back to the input later. You just have to start somewhere. And because it is like a loop going around. So I know that that's, that's pretty much the most confusing part of setting up things with Simulink, is that there's no top-down approach like you have in MATLAB code. But it can let you do things that mat it will be very hard to do in MATLAB code. It's, it should be in the signal routing library. It's called the signal routing library. So I run this, and How to scale this. Then, so this is the voltage in purple going up, and yellow is the current going down. 
So yeah, questions about that? Even if you don't set this up, I really want you to understand this basic circuit. If there are any questions, if you're confused about anything, ask me. The logic doesn't make sense, yeah. Wait, sorry. I think you can just, I, yeah. This is expanding the size of it. Number of inputs. also add as many scopes as you want. I mean, the idea of this is sort of like electrical engineering. I don't know when, you, you, have, a, you have a circuits class, right? At some point you can make circuits. Not really, okay, but generally in electrical engineering when you make a circuit, you just take the oscilloscope and put it everywhere to see what's going on and that's, that's sort of the intuition of building. 